Hey everyone, in this video I will show you our new SimOS software. I will show you how to set up the Hyper, what you can set up in SimOS, how you can connect it to SimHub. There are two modes. And at the end of the video I will also show you if you have a GT Max 32, you can update it to SimOS and I will show you how. So what you need for the Hyper is SimHub. For that just go to simhubdash.com, download and then download the latest version here. Also I would highly recommend to buy a license for SimHub. It's really not expensive. It's pretty much the cheapest option, $6.99, but buy it for whatever you think is appropriate. It will unlock the faster processing for the Dash and SimHub is just such a good software and I think it deserves a little support, but you can use the free version if you want to. Okay, so once you've downloaded SimHub, just open the zip file, double click the exe, wait a few seconds, here you go, and then click through it. I mean, of course, uh, read it all, accept it. Uh, make sure this check mark here is ticked, that installs the Vocor driver. You need that for the dashboard of the Hyper. Just go through all this and install the software. And then you can directly launch some up here. We'll do it now. If you bought the license, just double click the license file you downloaded and it will automatically install the license for you. All right, then head over to the Devices tab. This will typically be empty if you just installed some up. Then click on Add a New Device. Go to Gomez Sim Industries, select your wheel. As of now with SimOS, the GT Max and the Hyper is supported. So we have the Hyper on the rig, so we'll click on the Hyper. Uh, then there are two modes how SimHub will basically process the data and send it to the wheel. There's the simple mode that I would recommend and then there's the advanced mode. We'll go with the simple mode here first. I'll show you what the advanced mode can do in a second. And then you're pretty much greeted with that. So if the driver did install correctly, then it should automatically turn on the wheel and the display and be insanely bright. Let's turn down the brightness of the LEDs here. And the first thing I would do is check this box here, connect to a specific screen and then select the ID from the display of the Hyper. If you have just one display connected, then it should be pretty easy. There's just one in the drop down list. If you are crazy like me and you have four Vocors connected, then you need to figure out which one is the correct one. In my case, this would be this one here. So click that and then it will always just talk to this display that is in the Hyper. If you don't have this ticked and then, for example, you have two displays and then you disconnect one and then SimUp can get confused, just select the ID. can highly recommend that and then move on. If you have issues with USB throughput, there's typically always a solution to that. If you can't figure it out, open a support ticket in our Discord. But you can also now reduce the frame rate of the display here to basically make it a bit easier for the USB device. But like I said, if you have issues, create a ticket will help you with the process. Then here you can select whichever dashboard should be shown on the device. As of now, the SimOS installer does not automatically install the dashboards we have. So what you want to do is go to the GSI Discord, check the channel dashes and LED profiles, and then just download the ones that you want to use. For example, here the, the GT Max dash or whatever. Download it, just click on it, and SimUp will automatically install it for you, and then it will appear in this drop-down menu here. On this side, you can determine what the wheel should do when you're not in the game, whether it should show the display or whether it should turn it off. I like to always show the splash screen here when I'm not in the game. SimOS actually has the feature, if you turn off your PC, it will automatically turn off all the LEDs and the display, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, then here you can adjust the brightness of the screen and the contrast, and that's pretty much it. If we head over to the LED section, if you chose the simple profile, you will have the RGB LEDs, which is the shift light indicator on top here. So let's say you want to change that and go to edit profile, and then you can, for example, import another profile here, the one from Yoop, for example, are very good. He basically recreated all the LED mapping from all the cars in iRacing. But we also have a default setting in here, so play around with that. And then for the button lighting, there are two things. First, you can choose edit default colors here. And then you can, for example, set all your colors and buttons to purple because that's the best color. Click OK and now you see these two buttons are purple. It's hard to see in the camera because the LEDs are so bright. It's overexposing the sensor. But if I go to, let's say, maybe red is more visible. Yeah, you see. You can just map the default colors here. And then if you go to Edit Profile, you can create effects. For example, let's go here and select the speed limiter. 
then go to Open Test Data Editor and select Game Running and Pit Limiter on. Then it will simulate this effect. And if we go to Blinking, you can see LED 1 is the first encoder. Second would be here. So for example, I have my Pit Limiter button typically here, so I would set it to 12. And then when you enable the pit limiter in the game, this will flash. And if you turn it off, it will stop flashing and go back to the default color. Since we are in the simple profile, this means every LED is one button or encoder. So if you want to do fancy animations where the lights will rotate and stuff within one encoder or button, then you need to go to the advanced mode. But if you just want to use basic on-off effects without any crazy animations within the encoder or the button, then just use the simple profile. That's what I use. Very easy to set up. Also, if you don't want to use the default colors, you can turn them off here. Or you can say that they only light up when you're in the race. So when you're out of the game, it will turn off. You can adjust it to your liking. If you use a dash on the device that has uh, different dash screens or, or several triggers, you can set it up here. For example, let's set the page onto one of those encoders. Just click on it, turn the encoder and that's pretty much it. It will not work while I'm not in the game because there's just a standby page here. But that's pretty much the simple mode. If we delete this and add it as the advanced mode, it will pretty much look the same for the display here. So again, make sure to select the correct ID here. Then the dash, same thing. And here you pretty much have access to the raw LEDs in the wheel. As of now, there are 88 LEDs in there. Every button has four LEDs, every encoder has four LEDs, and you can just do whatever you want with it. If you want to make your life a bit easier, then go to our Discord and grab the profile that Koromoto made. Just download it, then head over to the LED section of the Hyper, go to Profile Manager, then click the Import button, which is this one here. Head over to your download folder and just import it and then click on load. And now you see we have all the colors on the wheel. And if you go to edit profile, you see he made some very nice groups that basically pre-maps the LEDs for you. So for example, left buttons are here, button one, two, three, four, five, and then you can add effects here, stuff like that. I would personally recommend to just use the simple mode. I think that is easier. You have a split between button lighting, encoder lighting, and the and the shift light indicator stuff. But if you want to go absolutely crazy and use fancy animations and everything, that's what the advanced mode is for. I think that pretty much sums up SimHub. I would say next thing we'll talk about is SimOS. So SimOS is the firmware that is on our new wheels. It ships with the Hyper, you can update the GT Max. It will come to the old wheels eventually too. The X29 will be on SimOS. And another part of SimOS is the app for Windows. I'll put the download links for everything in the description below. You can also grab it from our Discord. You can grab it from the website, wherever you want. Just download it. 1.0.2 is as of now the current version, but the Discord and the website will always have the newest one. Just install it. It will install some dependent stuff you will see it it will not do it now here because i already have SimOS installed before then click launch and here we go i'll quickly guide you to the features we have here it's as of now we focused on getting the best performance out of the wheel in terms of debouncing of the encoders and buttons but there will be very cool features coming soon so always check for the newest firmware in the next versions of the SimOS app, it will also tell you when there's a new wheel firmware available and automatically update your wheel, or not automatically, but ask you if you want to update your wheel. But as of now, you have to do it manually. It's not really difficult. I'll show you how to do it later. But if you uh, go into the app, all devices, then you will see your wheels that are currently connected. For me, that's just the Hyper, so let's click on that. Then if you click on device info on top here, you can see the wheel connected, which firmware it's currently running, serial number, blah, 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 blah. Uh, then we have the clutch mode. I'll quickly show you what this is doing. So dual clutch is the classic dual clutch mode. Where is it? Here, the Z-axis. So the right clutch in this case, as of now, is the master clutch. So that will go from 0 to 100%. And the left clutch will go from 0 to the byte point, which you can adjust in the app. So let's say you want to do a launch with a byte point of 46.3. Just set it here with a slider or with this. Click apply. 
and then it's 46.3 as you can see here. You can also set the master clutch to be on the left side instead, then the left side will go from 0 to 100 and the right side will go from 0 to byte point. You will not have to calibrate the clutches anymore, that is completely dynamic in SimOS now, so just use them and don't worry about calibration. Then the next mode is the classic gas and brake mode. If you want to use it for gas and brake, it's two different axes, you can use that in the game, so it goes from 0 to 100 and the other one goes from 0 to 100. It maps to a different axis actually, as you can see here there's the throttle axis and here we have the brake axis. Just classic gas and brake mode. Then we have launch control. Thanks to Kevin for that suggestion. I think that is actually a very genius way to control the byte point. If you look at these numbers here, every clutch, both the left and the right, will go from 0 to 100%, except for if you use them both. If you pull them both to 100%, the wheel will go into the launch control mode. And then if you drop one of the clutches, it will go to the byte point. It doesn't matter if you drop the right one or the left one. The wheel will automatically figure out which one you dropped and then go to the byte point. And then you can use the other one to go from byte point to zero. I think this is probably the best mode. I only can think of one scenario where dual clutch might be better and that is iRacing pit stops. You know, sometimes GT3 cars, you cannot get out of the box, so you use the clutch at the bite point to get a better launch. If you use the launch control mode while you're in the pit, you need to go first to 100% and then hold one. That would not be the case with a regular dual clutch mode, but yeah. Then the next mode is the button mode. If you play ACC, for example, you don't need a clutch. You can also just assign the clutches to behave like a button. Very simple. So left clutch now is button 15, right clutch would be button 18. That's it. The next category would be the encoder settings. You can set them to engage the push button on release or on push. And on release enables the encoder smart mode. What that is doing is if I turn this encoder, for example, here, it will be button 38. If I turn it to the right, button 37 to the left. I can also push the button down and then it's 40 and 39. So it's pretty much two encoders in one. And if you go on release, then what the smart encoder mode will do is if you push and rotate, it will send the encoder buttons. And if you let it go, nothing will happen. If you just push the encoder and let it go, it will send the button number of the encoder push button. So for example, I could use one encoder for traction control one, increase, decrease, traction control two, increase or decrease or toggle traction control. So this is like a smart mode that you don't always send the push button. But if you want to use the normal mode, then you can go on push, click apply, and then it will always send the button press on the encoder. So you see, I push and rotate, it sends these two numbers. I don't push, it will send these two numbers, uh, but it will always send this one here. And if you do it on release, then it's smart enough to not send the push if you use the rotate function. You can configure this for every encoder individually. Then encoder pulse width is how long the wheel will send a high impulse to the game when you turn the encoders. Some games need different settings to properly register the encoders. Just play around with these settings. What I recommend is set them to 30. That seem to work very well for iRacing and for ACC. ACC can be slightly glitchy in the menu when you try to assign the buttons. It might need several attempts to <laughs> assign the button, but then in the game it will actually work very reliably. But if you have any issues here, just play around with that. It goes from 10 to 250, but yeah, we default to 30. And this applies to the encoders and to the funky switches. That's pretty much the functionality of the current SimOS version. If you get your Hyper, it will most likely not running the latest firmware version. If you use the current SimOS app, you will have to update the firmware manually. In future versions, this will be a feature here, check for updates, and then you can automatically update it. But as of now, you need to go full hacker man here. First of all, go to the Discord, go to the development section and build SimOS, then download the latest version, then go to the about tab and click the build seven times. Then you will be in developer mode, then go to all devices, go to the hyper again, and then if you scroll to the bottom, you will see the developer tools. Just go enter DFU, and then it will pop up as a device in DFU mode. If this does not happen, there are two possibilities. The first one is 
if you don't have the DFU driver installed. I'll put the link to the DFU driver in the description. Just download the zip file. It's called DFU driver. Right click, extract all. And then all you have to do is click this STM32 bootloader batch file and then it will automatically install the driver for you. Once you've done that, just try again. Restart the SimOS app maybe. Go into the DFU mode and then it should appear here. Another possibility why this doesn't work is Thrustmaster unfortunately has really bad drivers. Let's cruise with devices that use the STM32 in the DFU mode for firmware updates. Uninstall the Thrustmaster driver, then try again. Anyways, uh, go to device in DFU mode, just click it. Then you have this dialog here. Go to select file, go to your download folder and then just click the current SimOS version, 1.0.3 in this case, and then just go to flash device. This takes, I don't know, five seconds, and then you're good to go. Yep, that's it. Hyper 1.03 running now. If you have the GT Max running on the old firmware, pretty much the same principle. Go to all devices, select the GT Max, make sure you're in the developer mode, then go to enter DFU, flash the firmware. It's the same firmware for the Hyper, for the GT Max, for the X29. It's just one file. And then once the update is complete, what you probably will see is that your GT Max now is a Hyper. But don't worry, just go to the bottom here and make sure to select wheel type to GT Max. So I can make my Hyper a GT Max now, for example. It will reboot and then it should be the correct wheel here. That's pretty much it for now. If you have any ideas for SimOS to be included, leave them in the comments down below or post them on the Discord, on the GSI Discord. We are always looking to improve the wheels as good as we can. So if you have any ideas that you would love to see in the wheel, let us know. We'll try to make it happen. But that's pretty much it. How to set it up in SimHub, how to use the SimOS app, how to update your GT Max to SimOS. So yeah, I think that's it. Have fun with your wheel and see you next time. Bye-bye.